Traditional behaviors explain the causes of behavior in terms of learning experiences, or conditioning. They don't deny the influence of genetics, but they really downplay its importance relative to the power of conditioning. We can divide conditioning into two categories, classical and operant. In this video, we're going to take a look at classical conditioning. Scientist Pavlov uncovered the concept known as classical conditioning, now sometimes referred to as Pavlovian conditioning. He was studying dogs and digestion and came across something really quite interesting. He noticed that his dog would salivate not only to the sight of food, but also to the sound of his assistant's footsteps. What was happening here? Why was the dog salivating to the sound of footsteps? It turns out, through classical conditioning, we can teach an organism to respond to a neutral stimulus by pairing it with a not-so-neutral stimulus. But what does all this mean? Let's take a look at Pavlov's experiment to better understand. He said, before I give my dog food, I'm going to ring a bell. Just an ordinary bell, but I must pair it with the reception of food every time. This bell is what he referred to as the neutral stimulus. On its own, it doesn't produce any specific response out of the dog. With this neutral stimulus, there has to be an unconditioned stimulus. In Pavlov's case, it was food. Without any conditioning, the dog's automatic or unconditioned response is to salivate. Upon consistent pairings of the neutral stimulus and unconditioned stimulus, the dog starts to learn this association and we create a conditioned response. Let's break that down a little bit. The dog will salivate, of course, when he's given food. That's our unconditioned stimulus and unconditioned response. But more importantly, the dog will start to salivate at just the ring of a bell, even when we remove the food. Our once neutral stimulus, the ringing of a bell, is now a conditioned stimulus, and it, it elicits a conditioned response to salivate. Pavlov further found that there exists second-order conditioning. This is when a previous conditioned stimulus can now become an unconditioned stimulus. For our example, the ringing of a bell can now be paired with, for example, the flickering of a light. And eventually, the flickering of a light will elicit the dog to salivate without ever introducing food. However, without occasionally pairing the unconditioned stimulus with the conditioned stimulus, we'll start to see a gradual disappearance of this learned association. This is referred to as extinction. In our example, if the dog is constantly exposed to the sound of the bell, but it's no longer paired with food, ever, then the dog will start to forget or unlearn the association it had between ringing a bell, receiving food, and therefore salivating, and will no longer salivate to the sound of the bell. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.